Hi there folks, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing great. Um, today's a good day. Today's about Hyperworks. <laughs> That's why it's a good day. No, it's a Saturday for me, but uh, I'm an insanely motivated structural engineer, so Saturday work is normal, I guess. Well, if you're a YouTuber, yeah, it's kind of mixed a bit, a bit yeah. Well, I do that for fun, so um, that's okay. Let's get into the video. Today we we're gonna talk about Hyperworks 21 and the shortcuts you can use, because shortcuts are really important. They offer you a great way to uh, speed up your process, and we will go along with it. Uh, will bit will be a little bit bumpy um, here and there, I guess, because I don't know all the shortcuts by heart now. I have to look at a sheet, a cheat sheet. <laughs> but um, yeah, we will figure stuff out as we go. So, no, no, what? This one, no, this one. This one is the right scheme. All right, here we have a new Hyperworks session. So Hyperworks 2021. I'm filming that on 2021, but, 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 but I had a talk, um, with with some folks of Altair uh, you know, yesterday and 2021.1 is around the corner and I've got some favorite news for you because it has a dark mode. Yes, I will be so happy to, to use that. Um, yeah, but now shortcuts, shortcuts. Let's get back to the topic. So Hyperbox 2021 here. Let's begin with the most common shortcuts. So Let's build a little bit of a model here, right? So I will just make a geometry, for example, a cylinder, maybe of size 10. I don't care about the exact location here at the moment. So I want this to be a full cylinder. So I patch the line here to a surface. Then I drag the surface along the normal. So I have to switch here to surfaces, select the surface, then catch the normal and pull it, maybe 100. And let's see what could else we do. I will complete this process by right-clicking and um, moving the mouse to the left. That's pretty cool. I'll show that uh, in a minute a little bit. And maybe let's do also a little hole here. So I will put another circle, maybe on this line and then on the middle. That's cool. And let's make this diameter too. I don't know if that worked, but because I misclicked uh, here on the keyboard, but that's okay. Then I will also patch this to a surface. Oops, patch. Wait for this little check mark. Oh, you can't see that. I'm sorry. So, see that little check mark. So, this works. And now I also drag this in this direction. And I want to remove the material. That does not work. Let's see if I can do this in the options. Wait in current component, no. Ah, okay. Well, okay, I created now as a part, a different component. That's okay. So um, I can also, there should be another option here. But now I want to, to just remove this volume from the cylinder from the main cylinder and i can do that with for example a boolean operation i'm sure there, there are other ways to do this but that's the one i think uh, is rather intuitive right now so i want to subtract target is the whole cylinder tool is this little cylinder check mark and you're done okay now i have this and you see, right click, you see on the left, if I move my mouse to the left, it gets completed, this action. So, all right, maybe before moving into the shortcuts, the keyboard shortcuts, let's talk about something of the, uh, some, some, some bit about the mouse controls. So I move the model around here, so this rotating takes place with the middle, middle, this one, um, the middle mouse key. And I can translate the model by using the right mouse key. So no more control hitting, 
because you know legacy hyperworks 2019 of for sure 2019 but i don't know 2020 i guess no 20 the new layout always had that with the middle mouse button but 2019 and before you had to uh, hit the control key for everything you want to do with the movement so yeah that's it's a little bit easier to to do that but you have to get your brain working around that so um yeah be prepared for yourself hitting the control key once in a while and uh oh i didn't have to do that so yeah but that's okay that's that's good and now let's save the model now first keyboard shortcut how to save a model control s Control S brings you the menu here, and I can save that for easy purposes. I will just uh, new folder here, model, and name this model.hm. Very intuitive name. Now I have saved the model. Now, if I want to create a new model, Control N, right? Control N gets you a new model. Look at there's no indication of do you want to save your model because you just saved your model. But if you haven't, then it would ask you for that. So control N for a new model, uh, control O for open a model. That's okay. So navigate to your desktop folder, not the music folder. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this one. And you can open a, a model like this. Now, save, open, new model. You can also export a model with a, with a, uh, with a keyboard shortcut. Just control E for export. So this brings you to this menu and then you can select the solver output file you want to do to have here and then just export. Also pretty cool. So, and a save as. Let's say you want to save this, but as a different file, control shift S. And I think those shortcuts are pretty normal, I guess. They are used in a lot of different ways. For example, the Explorer uses a lot of Control N, for example, um, uses also this, but also Word, for example, Control S for save or Control Shift and S for save, that's also there. Now let's move on. For example, if you want to have a help menu, you used to have to either press F1 and then you're getting to the, um, to the main help, or you had your help menu over at the top, or you could have pressed H in the legacy versions, right? H for the context sensitive uh, menus. This is now also possible, but also F1 will bring you to the context sensitive help. So for example, let's say I'm in a panel like Tetra Mesh, and I press now F1. A browser will open up and takes you exactly to that place where the help is uh, describing the functionality you may want to use here. Right, so here I'm in the Tetra Mesh panel. Works for sure, you can search and find something and look through the help by yourself, but it gets you to that point where the software thinks you want to head. So that's pretty nice. So that's help. And now one of my favorite features about the new layout is the search function because it's very, very powerful. You remember that you, um, or you can think of yourself being in the situation, you remember the name of what you want to do. For example, creating a Ecom P card or a solver keyword. Yeah, let's say for that reason. And you cannot find the panel, right? You're searching here. And what was it? Uh, was it here, was it here, was it here? And um, here the search menu here, pretty cool because you, for example, pcomp e, pcomp e, see it here. And now by pressing enter, creating a pcomp e card and can fill out the material, material uh, property, the reply properties in this case. Um, that's pretty neat. And you don't even have to click here. You can just, um, just on your keyboard, Press Control F for search. Also very intuitive, that's pretty cool. Now I want to delete this. Also made yeah, a shortcut, it's not really a shortcut, but you have to press the delete key and then it's getting deleted. Let's say you wanted to rotate your model by not using the mouse, but your keyboard. You can, that, you do, the, you can do that as well. And just use the arrow keys, go right, left. 
and um, if you hit control you move or you rotate around the other direction and up and down flips the model so but with control so let's wrap that up again so just right and left so this is right and left key then control right and left the other axis um, up and down it's also incremental doing that and control up and down just flips by one tapping once flips the model that kind is pretty handy because um, maybe you want to have oh what's the other side look like all right just press one button and um or two two keys in this case control plus up um, and you're there so um that's about it for this and then you also may um for the mouse controls if you press your middle mouse button right you can see there is a little cross yeah that's at the center of the model right now and this is the rotation center it's pretty um important for getting around your model quick but if you want to um turn or rotate around this point just simply click here with the middle mouse button or if you want to set your um uh, rotation center hitting control and the middle mouse button that sets it and now you can press anywhere and rotate around this new rotation center if you want to reset that you just hit control and the middle mouse button but in space right for example here now it's reset now it's in the middle of the mouse again uh, of the model again sorry about that now zooming is scrolling of the middle mouse button <laughs> the, the wheel of course and you also have this circle zoom by hitting the alt key and just drawing a circle or just making something like this with the middle mouse button so pressing alt and middle mouse button lets you draw this line and you want to focus on this area maybe you want to focus on the cylinder uh, cut here this is how you do it all right and uh, let's say you're lost in the model and you want to fit it back in just hit the ladder you guessed it f so f is fit and this um, gets you back to to the, the the whole model in this case or the whole selection which is displayed here now if you want to go back to a previous view, previous view you can hit the b key like this switch between between two views that's cool but you also can save your views that's also pretty nice for example if i want to have this view for example here saved i just hit control and any numeric key for example control one now this is saved and now i can return uh, for example look at this direction and save it to control two to two and now if i'm pressing one i get to view one if i'm pressing two i get to view two that's also pretty pretty neat now um let's talk a little bit about display stuff height show you see that little icon here that's um that the show height tool and you see also the shortcut if you just hover over it you see that it's this capital letter d in brackets so if you hit the d you in it yeah pressing t d again you get out of it so it's it's a toggle toggle button the d gets gets into it and now for example you can select something and it hides that and um shift and the left mouse button <coughs> brings it back so it's uh, the functionality of the tool but we, we will not get into this as i haven't um haven't quite reviewed it uh, to that point and i'm comfortable comfortable uh, talking about all of the features all right so this is d for getting into the show height tool so if you're um now maybe let's uh let's duplicate a few components here um i want to you see it here shortcuts what i wanted to show you here for example reverse hide isolate and show but i want to uh, duplicate some components and now here I'm in the mode that the components are not shown in the model browser, but rather I can double click here and have a components browser. 
and a components browser here I can duplicate it. Duplicate also shortcut, right? Uh, Control D. I didn't do that, but I will do it one more time. Control D duplicates it. And now, now just let's use the move tool. Move tool, you guessed it, letter M. So if I'm in the graphics, oh, actually not. What this was somehow implemented. Oh, okay. I have to look into this, but let's use the move tool and um, just move the components a little bit. Why is this not duplicating the stuff in it, right? So let's hide the geometry. Ah, those are empty components. That's odd. The one the component one has the surface in it, right? Component two has nothing in it. Component three has nothing in it. So the duplication somehow the component does not include does not include the geometry. That's a good point uh, to learn because I didn't expect that to be this way because I thought that if I all right. I want to remove those. Delete. Okay, let's try that again. So this is my component, right? If I now control D, duplicate this. Then the move tool. I have to go out of the move tool. So control D with this selection on, duplicates it, but there's no geometry in it. All right. Well then, I should have not duplicated um component, but rather the, the, the solid, for example. All right, let's do that. Um, I can switch here to solids. Select this and Control-D duplicates it. Now let's see. I use the move tool to move it. Not working. Control-D does not. Does not work here. That's strange. Let's let's do that again. Right click duplicate. There's not a such thing. But let's let's make another assumption. For example, Control C copies it and Control V pastes it. Right. So um and also there's a little uh trick to that. So Control V would paste it into a new component, which is exactly what we want to do. But control shift V would paste it into the same component. And we will try both ways, right? So there's one solid here. I press control V and control C to copy it. And control V to paste it. And actually, I should have not been in the move tool. So getting out of the move tool, selecting the component, control. Sorry, control C and control V. Paste another component here. And both have solids in it. And it also jumped to the move tool, right? So it, it anticipated that I wanted to copy something and then move it around, which is right in this case. So this is what works. All right, I have to look into it, what, what would cause the component to, to behave like that. But all right, so this is this is this. And if I want to copy and paste it into the same component, out of the move tool, select the component, control C, control shift and V. Getting it. This pasted it into another component. But I wanted to have it into the same component. Ah, I was in the selection of components. Ah, my bad. Sorry. Uh, let's let's delete it again. So this third component. Let's delete this. So the delete key does not work if you're in the move tool. You just have to be out of the move tool. Now, all right, we have those settings. <laughs> let's back up a little bit. Try to understand that. I want to select a solid. So I move this here to solids. I select the solid. I press Control C to copy it. 
Now I press Ctrl Shift and V to paste it into the same component as this is N. Let's see if it's it, it's the second one, right? So Ctrl Shift V did that and it jumped to the move tool so I can move it around. And yeah, exactly. That's what, what I suppose that um what supposedly uh, would have to happen. So you have two components. The second one has now two of those components. All right, let's backtrack a little bit. Sorry for the confusion. Um, this that you can copy. Um, if you if you copy components, then it's copying the geometry with it, right? So this worked. But if you duplicate components, you're not duplicating the entities within the components, right? So if I right click duplicate here, duplicate, control D, yeah, duplicate, then it's duplicated, but this third component has nothing in it. No geometry, no mesh, nothing. I'm not sure if this, this is how it should work, but all right, um, let's get back to this. So we were in the section of how to do some display options. So if I, you have the selector, selector here, and this is pretty powerful. The selector is pretty damn powerful because you can select everything with it. And there are lots of short, shortcuts coming into this one. So you have the selector here ready. It's set to components. But if you want to, for example, select uh, solids, like I did, uh, selecting here solids, you also could have pressed the uh, S key. Now your surfaces. Well, I wanted to solids. Just press it once again, now in the solids menu. Right? That easy. So surfaces, solids, just the S key. Elements, E key. You don't have any elements? Well, let's change that. Let's make a quick mesh on this. I know there's uh, this new way to create a mesh, but I'm just currently liking the, the standard old legacy way more. They just uh, hit F12 and select all surfaces here. And mesh it. One, I want just want to not spend too much time on the meshing. Yeah, yeah, and recompute that. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, I'm not anticipating to doing an analysis here, so I'm not caring about the mesh quality this much. But um, you see, if you press, you're pressing E right now, you switch to over elements. So this is context sensitive. You see, there's no connectors here because I don't have any. But if I had connectors, those would pop up here and you could also access them with a shortcut. Not 100% sure that you can't select connectors with a shortcut, but I guess, so. yeah, yeah, you can. It's the C key. So C was for components and connectors, E for elements, L should work for lines. And what else? It says that laminates also and loads for sure. Um, just for the sake of it, create a load here. Uh, let's see, analyzes loads. Let's just put a force here. Great. I don't care about the size here. So now you should see loads up here. And there you have it, loads. And also load collectors. So if you're pressing L, you're switching between lines and loads. Then you have materials. You now I don't have any material, but let's create one. Wow, let, let's 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 use some shortcuts for it, right? Um, let's say I want to create a mud one card. Control F, mud one. I'm not jumping in here. Mud one. Okay, my keyboard is not working. If I'm in the search bar, let's pr make sure I'm not in any menu. So I hit Control F. And now mud one, just hit enter. Oh, there should be a dialogue, but I think this is only working if you're in the models browser. Let's check it to make it sure that it's not our fault. Um, all right, no mud one here. Control F, mud one, enter. Yeah, this works. Now you could tap, by pressing tap, going through there. You want to set your Well, you see, here I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit thinking about um, how would that be? For example, you saw me, you saw me toggling through those, those values, right? I wanted to give it a name, for example, steel. 
Now if I press tab, just going to the next cell. Enter leaves the panel. So you here and now if you pressing tab, it's not gonna work. Shift and tab goes up a bit. This is okay, but if you want to keep that, enter is not the right option. Let's see if right click is the right um, the arrow key to the right. Just to that to get out of the selection. Now if you press tab, it's not working. <laughs> Alright. Alright, it well it was a try. But if I press enter, that's not working because I want to go to the next cell after that because I want to uh, define the, the new. The, let's check for Alt and Enter. But press Tab, you up here. Well, but yeah, that's that's maybe a point for a future update. But if you could, you can also just you move move uh, use your mouse here. <laughs> what? Use your mouse here. So, uh, for example, this and Enter and this and Enter and this and close and you you're done. So. That's not, not a problem. So the point was materials, right? So if I have materials, you see that it also went straight to another view here because it shows now the mesh in the color option of materials, I guess. Yeah. So if you had assigned materials here, this would show which part has which material, which, which is pretty cool. So materials is set. Notes are also possible to select, right? Any note. And any point also, points, plies, properties all have the letter P. Just have points here for now. Uh, let's create a property here. Uh, let's check again if that works with the shortcuts. So control F to get in the search. And for example, we want to do a P shell here. P shell, pressing enter and you're in here. So this is for example, my tube. Uh, pressing shift to go through here. And the thickness is two. And now pressing enter, I'm done. All right, so I think I have, I could have clicked the escape key to leave the panel. Let's check that one more time. So control F, for example, P solid property, right? And just leave the panel. I just hit enter for giving the name and escape does not clear the panel. Control V, no. Okay. This you should, should do like this. But um, yeah, maybe there's some hints in here and we will see about this in the future. So properties, that's all that and solid surfaces and also systems is the S key. So I don't have a system here right now, uh, an individual uh, coordinate system, for example. And yeah, and set to all is S escape and escape. So pressing escape twice gets you back to all selection. We can select everything you want. So this is about this. So if you have something selected, for example, a solid, this one, I can isolate it. I can, how can I get back? I think it's shift and A. Yeah, shift and A enables all the things back. How can you, I add something to the selection? Well, it's a bit, little bit different. In this case, the left click was used to add to a selection. And the right click was used to deselect something in the legacy mode. It's not that anymore. And also it's not with the shift key. This is a pretty big change. And I had some, some troubles get my head wrapped around this, but you all, you really deselect something with shift. You know, if you wanted to select some elements, right? You press E and you want to select it. Now hitting shift and drawing a rectangle will not get you anything because as soon as you're pressing shift, you see that little minus key, minus minus sign on, on the mouse. This indicates that this will subtract the selection from the current selection. So if you're just pressing no key at all, you can track and select something, some elements. But now if you want to deselect something, nothing with the right mouse button, it's pressing shift and drawing your rectangle again. If you don't like rectangle, you are pressing the right key and there you can see your other different selection modes. For example, a circle select or a freehand or a polyline. Uh, you can see this things here. All right, so this is about selection. So this, um, yeah, if you want to 
Um, there's some, some uh, nice tips around this as well. If you want to select the adjacent elements, you se select something, but you want to get uh, the adjacent uh, to, then you just hit Control and J. So once, twice, you can see that the adjacent elements get added to it. So this is that. This and you can also control M for selecting similar things. So in this case, all P shell or yeah, all surface elements um, would get selected. Same goes for properties, same goes for solids, something like this. This is selecting similar with control M. And you also have advanced selection modes. And this is done with the space bar if you're in a selector, but it's not here, but for example, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. For example, in, oh, let's see, you're in the components browser and you want to assign a property. You just hit left clicks once and now you would have to click here to get into the advanced selection, but you just have to train your muscle memory to just click once and press spacebar immediately after if you're not using the graphical user interface. This helps me quite a lot because I thought that you just have to, to make the double click and that Ah, oh, that that uh, yeah costs you some time. So just rather click once and then press spacebar, and you're in this menu where you then can easily search also for your properties you want to assign here. So this is this, and if you, for example, you selected something but you wanted to select the reverse of it, just hit Control R. So let me show that to you. You select some elements, for example, like this, and Control R inverses, inverts, inverts. Uh, the selection in here. So this is it, and I think this is this is about it. Now, that's um, y you all know the one of my favorite selection modes in Hyperworks at all times is the by face selection because, for example, you want to select all the elements uh, in here. You could, and uh, you would do that normally in a selector. Like one one node, for example, and then on the yellow, then by face. But here you could also use just the Alt key. So you see, um, it, it it's a feature angle here. I should uh, mesh that a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit uh, smaller mesh size. Let's do that for for once. You can also see how how deleting works. Not nothing with F two anymore. You have the element selector ready. Select the elements. Getting um. The delete key and to delete set. So I want to mesh it once again. So I'm using F12 here. <laughs> you don't have to. You can also use the ribbon menu, but I'm using that. And let's make the mesh size of 0 0.25. I think this is fine enough. Yeah, we compute. And we, we wouldn't have to use the QE optimize, but I think I have. I have gone too far with the mesh size. Let's make a break here by hitting the escape key and the right mouse button. And we mesh it once again. Let's go for something bigger here. Example one. Mesh it. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so if I want to select the um, the uh, elements on this on the surface here, we can just go select the element selector with pressing E and now Alt and the left mouse button. You see you also can see a preview. So hitting and you see all selected. Pretty cool. And you can also do that for a, a line selection or node selection by path. So let's see how this works. Let's get into a into a node selector, for example by clicking on loads and you have to click once here. This is one node selected and now hitting the alt key. Uh, I think I should have clicked it earlier. I'm sorry, that seems not to work. I have to look into this. But clicking the alt and the left mouse click selects elements by face or by edge. That's not by path, right, right, it's not by path. Uh, that's my bad, I'm sorry. So, this is that. 
But it should be, ah, select nodes and lines by path. Hmm. This is not working for this. But maybe it's working in the selector. So if I sh shift that to nodes, click once here. Yeah, this is working here, but it's not working in the, in the, in the panels here. But if you want to select uh, nodes by path, just click once here. Hold down the Alt key, and I'll click somewhere else, and it finds the notes by path. That's also a pretty cool feature. The notes by face, or elements, or entities by face and by path. It's pretty cool. All right, so we did that. Uh, we showed the uh, height, show, isolate, delete, duplicate. Uh, there's uh, nothing. Uh, that there's one more thing. You can also review uh, something with the Q key. Let's see how this works. Let's select, for example, an element. I never used that, so bear with me. Ah, it shows you the ID. That's pretty neat. But it also shows you if you just hover over something. And that's also pretty cool, because um, how often you have to get the element ID, and now you can just hover over an element and you can see the ID right there. I suspect that this works also with nodes and stuff like that. So this is it. I think we covered everything. Well, I'm sure there's some, some points I missed here, but um, I think it's quite, quite 80-90% um, of the shortcuts here. So I have a PDF um, which, uh, which is proprietary information of Altair Engineering. I will ask the guys at Altair if I can share that and paste the link into the description for downloading this. And um, yeah, this, this would be a way to go forward. But I think maybe also this video could have helped you to see just main shortcuts and how to use them. For sure, it takes some time to get used to it um, with every software. And also because if you're a legacy user, um, yeah, you, you may want it to have something differently. Well, actually you can. So if you go into the file preferences, you can go to the mouse controls and set this not to the default, but to legacy. And then you have your legacy mouse controls back on it again. So this is also possible. And with that, I conclude this video. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, leave a comment, leave a subscribe. Uh, I would be very happy to, if you do so. And uh, yeah. Hey guys, I look back at the script and I forgot one very important shortcut. Because if you want to toggle between the display modes, geometry, FE mesh, both, nothing, uh, you can do that with the G key. So if you're in the model here, G, see you can swap or toggle around those modes. This is pretty cool. What I can see is that it's not updating it here in the components browser, but it's updating it here. So this is this what what this is doing. So this is pretty cool. And also what I wanted to point out, if you have anything you want to revert, control C and control Y is standard. So you, for example, um, elements, I delete some elements. I want to revert this, control C. And if I want to redo it, control Y. So those points I wanted to add. But most of all, the G key, which is quickly jump through those uh, visualization processes. All right, thanks for watching and goodbye.